San Fernando Valley leaders meet to improve public transit, and kids find their love for reading through Dr. Seuss. This is Valley View News. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Alexis Liggins. And I'm Jarena Silva. Authorities in Ohio are searching for a suspect in the shooting of a pastor last weekend. Pastor Tim Remington was shot a day after Father delivering the invocation at the rally for Republican presidential face. candidate Senator Ted Cruz. Authorities speculate the shooting is related to a campaign rally. Remington is in stable condition after undergoing surgery. Police have identified the suspect as former Marine Kyle Andrew Odom. Authorities consider Odom armed and dangerous. Flint Mayor Karen Weaver says it's time to replace the lead-filled pipes in the city and is asking the state of Michigan to fund the project. Mayor Weaver asked the state for $55 million to fund installation of the new pipes. The city's water supply was contaminated two years ago when the state switched the water supply from treated water coming from Detroit to the untreated waters of the Flint River. More than 8,000 residents have been exposed to the contaminated water. The state government says the water is now safe to drink, but Mayor Weaver still says the pipes must be replaced. There's that psychological association that we can't get around. And in order for us to build trust back in the government and trust back in the water, we've got to have new pipes. Despite the state's argument that the water is safe, it still contains excessive amounts of lead, leaving residents to rely on bottled water for drinking and even bathing. If the state does end up giving money to supply Flint with new pipes, that money would not show an impact until October. Cal State Northridge officials and San Fernando Valley residents gathered last Thursday for the Valley Transportation Summit. The summit was held in an effort to reduce traffic, crowded parking lots, and get parked cars out of the neighborhoods near campus. Valley View News reporter Jarvis Heron has more. A CSUN study says 59% of students drive alone to school. For that reason, CSUN and San Fernando Valley officials want to get more people to use public transit. CSUN President Diane Harrison says improved public transit will cut down on traffic and make students' lives easier. A robust transit system that serves the needs of our students could mean a student being able to better balance a very busy class schedule and a part-time job, sometimes more than one job. Notable attendees included L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti, City Councilman Mitch Englander, and California State Senator Bob Hertzberg. Garcetti says more transit options need to be brought to the Valley. San Fernando Valley is still a place that is ripe for other BRT lines, bus rapid transit lines. CSUN should not be ignoring that conversation, and you have my support in ensuring that we drive dollars and that we drive lines to you. CSUN wants to improve bus services to connect the Valley's northeast and northwest communities to campus. Currently, only Metro buses 167 and 744 make stops at the CSUN transit station off of Darby Ave. Three other Metro buses make stops off Nordoff Street on the south end of campus and Zelza Ave on the northeast side of campus. Well, Senator Hertzberg says upset, Nordoff Street and, and Reseda and Boulevard aren't served valley, well. You know, if you, when you go and you show a big picture map of the valley and you include a, a, a bus rapid transit coming down Nordoff and one coming up Reseda or wherever it ultimately becomes that serves the transit hub here, it sends a message that the Northwest Valley is included as part of this large larger transportation plan. CSUN says about 10,000 students live within five miles of campus. About 20,000 live about 10 miles from campus. CSUN student Eric Cuevas is one of many students that rely on public transit to get around. I, I would like to see better options for someone who doesn't own a vehicle, for someone who, you know, needs to get around from not only just my job, but let's say to other internships or all sorts of opportunities that can arise. But if, you know, the public transportation, if the system isn't there, I can't, you know, reach that. CSUN and Valley officials are advocating for two new tax measures for the November ballot. If both measures pass, billions of dollars will be available to go toward public transportation projects. Reporting in Northridge, Jarvis Heron, Valley View News. The Metro Gold Line expansion is now open. It adds 11.5 miles to the Los Angeles County public transportation system. It now extends through Arcadia, Irwindale, Monrovia, Duarte, and Azusa. The $1 billion Gold Line extension makes the Metro rail system close to 100 miles overall. 
Mayor Garcetti says the goal of the extension is to ease congestion. The rail system will expand six more miles in May. The Gold Line extension is expected to carry over 13,000 passengers a day by 2035. Los Angeles is taking steps to go green as many cities are implementing bike lanes. But in San Pedro, newly added bike lanes are congesting the streets with more traffic for motorists. Valley View News reporter Carlos Gonzalez has more on the story. 21-year-old Christian Olicon says he's leaving home to reach class earlier than years past. When I'm leaving the school in the mornings, I notice that there's more traffic. Uh, when there used to be two lanes, I was able to get on the freeway right, right away. The way he travels to school or work hasn't changed. He still drives every day. In efforts of making Angelinos travel green, bike lanes were added to Pacific Avenue in San Pedro. These bike lanes are all part of the 2010 LA Bike Plan, which over the span of 30 years is supposed to add 1,600 miles of bikeways throughout the city of Los Angeles. The streets of Pacific Avenue have greeted morning and rush hour drivers with slow paced bumper to bumper traffic due to the recent added bike lane. Lobardo Cruz's tamale stand lies on the corner of 8th and Pacific. He believes traffic buildup is not the only thing the bike lanes are capable of causing. There are times the cars drive too close to the curb. They drive over the bike lanes. It's possible they can cause an accident. Traffic bunches up. There aren't many cyclists. Pacific Avenue changed from two lanes in each direction to one, also adding left-hand turn lanes. The bike palace has been on Pacific since 1973. Although the bike lanes are made to focus on the safety of cyclists, owner Tony Yabaka believes the room made for the lanes benefit more than just one group of individuals. Yeah, it's definitely made Pacific safer for the cyclists, I think for drivers, because it has forced them to slow down. They cannot go around the cars in front of them anymore. The total cost of the bike lanes wheeled in at just under $500,000. And even though majority of the cyclists choose to ignore the bike lanes, at least they have the option. In San Pedro, Carlos Gonzalez, Valley View News. A powerful El Nino storm hit California earlier this week. It brought heavy rains and strong winds to Southern California and up to 20 inches of rain in some areas of the state. Winds throughout the state reached up to 60 miles per hour. The mountain areas accumulated over three feet of snow, bringing out skiers and snowboarders. The weather this coming week in Los Angeles is expected to be sunny and in the 60s, but there is a chance of rain. El Nino storms are bringing dangerous conditions to Southern California beaches. Valley View News reporter Jarena Silva has more on the story. El Nino storms are bringing high surf to Southern California beaches. High surf advisories are expected for the next few weeks with the predicted storms. Large surf of 10 to 15 feet, possibly even reaching up to 18 feet, might bring beach erosion and coastal flooding. Professor of Geomorphology Emily Orm explains how rip currents are wreaking havoc. So the water piles up in the foreshore and then basically it has nowhere to go. So it is returned seaward uh, at a high velocity rate. Uh, and that's why we have these, these fairly dangerous conditions. Two weeks ago, four people were swept into the ocean while at the Redondo Beach break wall. Harbor Patrol crews attempted to rescue the group, but one man died from the strong waves. High surf and possible rip currents make visiting the beach dangerous for the next few weeks. People are advised to swim parallel to shore if caught in a rip current. In Manhattan Beach, Jarena Silva, Valley View News. Authorities say the knife found on O.J. Simpson's property is inconsistent with the 1994 murders of his ex-wife, Nicole. Simpson was acquitted of the murders, but he is serving 33-year sentence in Nevada for armed robbery. The knife was found on Simpson's property by a construction worker and was given to an off-duty officer 13 years ago. Authorities are investigating why the police officer did not turn in the knife any sooner. A man who held two subway employees at knife point was shot and wounded by police last weekend in Orange County. Police say the incident was a robbery gone wrong. The suspect is in stable condition. The subway employees were not harmed. The shooting was recorded by the officer's body cameras. A mass shooting took place last weekend at a Compton party. Nine people were shot and one man was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The shooting took place at 1.30 in the morning on the 900 block of West Victoria Street. Police are still investigating the incident. Former First Lady Nancy Reagan has died. She was 94. 
Mrs. Reagan passed away from congestive heart failure last weekend at her Bel Air home. She was known for her Just Say No campaign against drugs. Tributes to Mrs. Reagan poured in from numerous leaders, including President Obama. She will be buried next to her husband at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley. Coming up next, the Lakers make history. And USC is now one of the most expensive private schools in the nation. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him? What not to hit. Hey there, Mrs. Carter. You can earn over 10% on your money if you deposit your savings into you our investment You are lucky programs. sweepstakes winner. Mrs. Carter, Just enter your Grandma, contact information, information and account. your winnings will Grandma, be Grandma, it's me. Please help me. I'm stuck in Ohio and my wallet was stolen. Please send me some money so I can get home. Millions of people, especially seniors, are targeted every day by an array of fraudulent scams through online technology. Please be aware. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check, one, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. Lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. A new study says daylight savings time could increase the chances of having a stroke. The decade-long study compared people who were hospitalized before and after the change of time. The results showed that in the first two days following a daylight savings time transition, the overall rate of stroke increased by 8%. Researchers blame the increase on sleep disturbances. The study says cancer patients and people over the age of 65 appear to be at a higher risk of stroke immediately after the time change. Today marks another daylight savings change as clocks sprung forward this morning. Different time zones mean the solar eclipse that began on Wednesday ended on Tuesday. Here's the reason. The moon's shadow fell over parts of the Pacific Wednesday morning and then crossed the international dateline Tuesday afternoon. This was the first time in 40 years that a solar eclipse was visible from the continental U.S. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon's shadow encases the Earth. If you miss this one, there's always next year when the next solar eclipse will occur. Now let's go to Carlos Gonzalez with the latest news in sports. Thanks, Jarena. The Los Angeles Lakers make history. The Lakers staged one of the biggest upsets in NBA history. The 12-51 Lakers defeated the 55-5 Golden State Warriors last Sunday, 112-95. Yeah, you heard it correctly. It is the first time in NBA history that a team's won fewer than 20% of its game, has beat a team who's won more than 90% of theirs. Kobe Bryant making the start after missing the last game with a shoulder injury. Let's jump to the first quarter. The Lakers take an early 4-3 lead with the early lay-in by Kobe. Jumping to the second quarter, Lakers up 8. D'Angelo Russell picks off Sean Livingston's pass, who dishes it off to Marcelo Huerta, who then, with a gorgeous touch pass, leaves it off for Brandon Bass for the jam. Still in the second quarter, Lakers up 12. Now Stephen Curry has his pass intercepted by Jordan Clarkson, who takes it in for the easy dunk. The Warriors had a total of 20 turnovers on the night. You're not going to win many games like that. 
fourth quarter. Lakers up 16. Huertas again with a beautiful pass, this time with a lob to rookie Larry Nance Jr. The Lakers knock off the Warriors by 17 points. The Warriors shot four from 30 from the three-point line. Clarkson led all scorers with 25 points. Russell finished the game with 21 points and five assists. Denver Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning has announced his retirement after 18 seasons. Manning called the Broncos last weekend to make it official. Manning addressed the media on Monday. When I look back on my NFL career, I'll know without a doubt that I gave everything I had to help my teams walk away with a win. Manning will retire as the all-time leader in passing touchdowns as well as passing yards and wins. He is the only quarterback to win a Super Bowl with two different teams. Manning won a Super Bowl in his final season last month with the Denver Broncos. Nate Diaz defeated featherweight champion Conor McGregor in a non-title USC match. Diaz delivered an impressive performance and was able to submit McGregor in the second round. Diaz accepted the fight on 11 days notice after Rafael Dos Anjos withdrew from the fight with a broken foot. Earlier, Holly Holm defended her bantam weight title against Misha Tate in her first fight after her huge victory over Ronda Rousey. Tate defeated Holm in the final round after a rear naked choke left Holm unconscious. Next up for Tate will be defending her belt against former champion Ronda Rousey. Rousey has defeated Tate twice. The CIF Los Angeles and Southern Section basketball finals were held last weekend. Westchester High School defeated Narbonne High at Cal State Dominguez 51-42 to take the Division I LA City title. The number one ranked team in the nation, Chino Hills High School, rolled past Sierra Canyon High School 105-83 to take home the Division I Southern Section Championship in the Honda Center. UCLA-bound Lonzo Ball finished the game with a triple-double, 20 points, 17 rebounds, and 10 assists. Both Narbonne and Chino Hills advanced for the opportunity to compete for the California State Championship. Cal State Northridge men's basketball team finished its season with a triple overtime loss to UC Davis. The Matadors lost 87-83. to The Matadors finished with 10 wins and 20 losses this season. The game was the last one for the senior trail Hell Emerson. Hell Emerson finished the game with 8 points and 10 rebounds. He is the only Matador to finish with more than 800 career points, 700 rebounds, and 300 assists. That's all for sports. Now back to you. The Obama administration will begin rating its health care providers on the number of doctors and hospitals included in their plans. Insurers will still be allowed to sell health plans with limited networks of providers, but consumers will know in advance what they are getting. The maximum amount of out-of-pocket costs for consumers under the Affordable Care Act will increase next year to $7,150 for an individual. For families, it will be $14,300. United Airlines CEO Oscar Munoz will be back at work tomorrow, just two months after receiving a heart transplant. He suffered a heart attack last October, one month after taking over at United Airlines. Munoz has been participating in all of the major corporate decisions during his absence and says he is ready to work full time. Munoz became CEO after former CEO Jeff Smisek resigned over a corruption investigation. The founder of email, Ray Tomlinson, has died from a heart attack at the age of 74. Tomlinson sent the first email on the ARPANET system. His invention was the first to allow individuals to send messages electronically to one another. He was the creator of the at symbol, which is used to connect users with their email destinations. USC's tuition will be more than $50,000 in the 2016-2017 academic year. The USC financial aid website announced the increase. Students will pay about $2,000 more next year. The increase makes USC one of the most expensive private universities in the country. When you add in room and board, a student at USC will pay nearly $70,000 a year. Valley View News interviewed CSUN students about the tuition cost at USC compared to those here at CSUN. Knowing that they did raise the tuition makes it more difficult for them, and coming here it makes it Really, it makes me feel very um, grateful to know that we do have a school that doesn't really raise their tuition. And over here, I still struggle a lot trying to pay this without any, you know, help from financial aid. So I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to afford something like that. Or and if I do, I'd be in a lot of debt. Big universities like obviously you know UCLA, USC, Berkeley, you know Stanford, they are pretty expensive. So those who want to go straight off there or who think that they can go there are thinking maybe about starting at low, you know, like community colleges or st colleges like Northridge or, you know, Cal Poly or anything. It's kind of like 
relieving that it's not as expensive but then again it's pretty expensive like depending on um, like middle income class and especially me since my parents win a good amount and I don't get that much um, FAFSA. It makes it easier to want to stay here and it makes it easier to know that like what my degree at the end of the four years I will get the same one as someone, you know, going to a prestigious school that's 30 times more. You know? That part sucks, but it feels good knowing that I only have to pay not even a fraction, like a fraction of that. I also feel like it gives me more time, like I'm getting almost the same education per se. It depends on how much you put in it and I'm spending, what, what five times less, ten times less. Coming up next, another bombing in Somalia. And Hulk Hogan's trial begins. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Do you know what to do? Yes. Bring it back to me. Then I'll give you your money. Frank Thomas, you are under arrest for the theft of trade secrets. Come with me. Bye-bye, Frank. Theft of trade secrets is illegal. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. You guys going to my party on Friday? Yeah, dude. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> All right. What's up, dude? I'm loving your jacket. <laughs> don't be such a fag. If you don't mean it, why say it? Words hurt. Think before you speak. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just. Please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. A new study says taking a low dose of aspirin daily not only lowers the risk of heart disease, but cancers as well. The study finds that the regular use of aspirin reduces all cancers by 3%. Harvard researchers say almost 30,000 cases of gastrointestinal cancer a year could be prevented by daily aspirin use. But aspirin use does not have an impact on the risk for breast, lung, or prostate cancer. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says that feeding peanuts to infants for the first year of their lives might prevent a food allergy in children. New proposed guidelines recommend that children at risk of peanut allergies should be fed peanuts starting from four to six months old. The New England Journal of Medicine found that high-risk babies who were fed a soupy peanut butter mush were about 80% less likely to develop a peanut allergy by the age of five. Studies by the World Health Organization show that the Zika virus causes birth defects in pregnant women. Blood and urine tests were given to 88 pregnant women infected with the Zika virus. 72 of the women had abnormal fetuses. Abnormalities included calcification of the brain, abnormal flow of blood to the brain, and microcephaly, which is a condition where a baby's head is significantly smaller than expected due to abnormal brain development. Now let's go to Mariah Robinson with the latest in entertainment. Thanks, Alexis. Hulk Hogan's jury trial started in St. Petersburg, Florida this week. The 62-year-old is seeking $100 million in damages from media website Gawker for posting a two-minute clip of him having sex with the wife of his then best friend. Hogan's lawyer asked the jury to side with his privacy rights versus public interest in a celebrity. 2.5 million people have viewed the explicit footage online over the past six months. 
The first American Idol winner, Kelly Clarkson, has sided with pop singer Kesha in her allegations against record producer Dr. Luke. Kesha accused Dr. Luke of sexual, mental, and physical abuse. Clarkson said she was not sexually or physically abused by Dr. Luke, but that he did create a negative work environment and is unprofessional. Dr. Luke has denied that he sexually abused Kesha. Jimmy Kimmel will host this year's Emmy Awards. Kimmel hosted the Emmys in 2012. His selection was announced on the ABC morning show Good Morning America. The Emmys will be held in Los Angeles Sunday, September 18th and will be televised on ABC. Lady Gaga and her fiancé Taylor Kenny helped raise more than $1 million for the Special Olympics in Chicago, and it wasn't easy. Lady Gaga and Kenny jumped into Lake Michigan for the 16th annual Polar Plunge. They were joined by hundreds of others, including NBC weatherman Al Roker. Mayor Rahm Emanuel was present but did not take the plunge. That's all for entertainment. Back to more news. The Australian Navy intercepted a ship carrying more than 2,000 guns and grenades that may have been headed to Yemen. Officials believe the cash may have come from Iran. The weapons, including more than 1,900 AK-47 assault rifles, are likely intended for Houthi rebels in Yemen. In accordance with international maritime law, the crew was allowed to leave after the seizure. The sag afters Foundation Volunteered Children's Literacy Program Book Pals participated in the annual Read Across America Literacy Week. Actors read to children at Budlong Elementary School in South Los Angeles. Valley View News reporter Diana Jimenez has more on the story. In honor of Read Across America Week and Dr. Seuss's birthday, Bud Long Elementary School in South Los Angeles hosted a book fair and Discover Books donated 900 Dr. Seuss books. There were also volunteers from the Book Pals, which is a nonprofit organization that reads to elementary schools all over the United States. The Screen Actors Guild of Los Angeles collaborates with Book Pals, and actors are the ones who volunteer. On the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. Reading and using my imagination has helped me get through a lot of stuff in my life, and um, however I can give back to the next generation that they may fall in love with reading and using their imagination by me being able to tell my story of the work that I do and um, just being able to share reading with them. Students from Bud Long Elementary were very excited to receive the books and had a great time reading them. However, events like these aren't common in South Los Angeles due to the lack of resources. Budlong hasn't had regular readers in a while. We don't have that many volunteers who live in this area, so we don't have that many people coming. And we haven't done a big event here in a long time. Despite the struggles, the students had a great time with the volunteers and their friends. They also felt more motivated to keep on reading. All week long they've been talking about reading, 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 and now we're covering the entire school. So every class here will be read to today by a book pal. The Los Angeles Book Pals extends from areas like Ventura to Irvine. They read to classrooms and encourage children to read. It's like Dr. Seuss says, the more that you read, the more that you know. The more that you know, the more places you'll go. In South Los Angeles, this is Diana Jimenez, Valley View News. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Alexis Liggins. And I'm Jarena Silva. We'll see you next time.